Now, at one point, uh, Peter spoke up for the whole group of disciples. And when he did, he said that he made this statement. See, we have left all and followed you. Now, <clears throat> he was speaking for the whole group, so of course that would, that would include James the Less that we're uh, considering today, or James the son of Alphaeus. They, all of the apostles became great witnesses for the Lord Jesus and his gospel. Well, except for Judas Iscariot, of course. And he was included in the number. But here... We have, we have this bold testimony of Peter. We've left all to follow you. Now, let's talk about for a minute the disciples and their strengths and weaknesses. There was one at one point in, in Mark 9. Let me find it here. In Mark 9... There was a case brought to them for ministry, and it picks up in verse 14. It says, when he, uh, he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude around them, and the scribes disputing with them. And immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed, and running to him greeted him. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? And one of the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit, and wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. And he answered him and said, O faithless generation, and these are the words of Jesus, and really uh, directed toward the uh, disciples. O oh, faithless generations, how, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought him to Jesus. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked the father, how long has this been happening to him? He said, from childhood. And often he's thrown, uh, thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him but if you can do anything have compassion on us and help us and Jesus said uh, said to him if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes immediately the father of the child cried out and said Lord I believe help my unbelief and when Jesus saw the people came running together he rebuked the unclean spirit deaf and dumb spirit I command you come out of him and enter him no more then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him, and he became as one dead, so that many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, this, kind, uh, this can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Now, I wanted to mention that passage because this is magnifying the weakness of even of the early apostles. Jesus gave them authority to preach the kingdom of God and to, to heal the sick and to cast out evil spirits. He, he conferred upon them an ability to do that. And obviously, James the Less or James son of Alphaeus would have been among those that Jesus had conferred that uh, ability upon. So the, the, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, record not only the good positive character flaws of, of these apostles, but also faults and um, uh, char character flaws that they had. So n not only good positive characteristics, but also faults and character flaws that they had and, and let lack of faith and that this is the case with this this case so those even among the apostles there was a weakness and so they had to show express and show their faith and and their trust in the Lord and what Jesus would be able to do uh, in and through them and uh, uh, and oftentimes in spite of them now 
James the less, son of Alphaeus. Now, each time he's listed in the number of the apostles. Mark and Luke and Matthew, uh, Mark and Luke and Acts, the, these uh, list. He's, he's known, as, James is known as the son of Alphaeus. Now, remember, also Matthew was the son of Alphaeus, so likely they're, they're brothers. And it's interesting that basically all we know specifically about this man is his name. He's given a nickname of James the Less. The Greek word is mikros, which basically means little James. Now, when, when I was in high school... <clears throat> the, there were three Mike Millers. Now, out of that three, one was known as Big Mike Miller, and the other one was known as Little Mike Miller. Well, if you know me, you know exactly which one I was <laughs> out of those two. But could it be that he, he was a small man, James the Less, or Little James, or he, he may have even been short like Zacchaeus, <clears throat> or just shorter than others. Or it may be that he was just lesser known than the other James. Remember, uh, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, the great fishermen, and, and uh, early on called to be apostles and associates of, the, uh, of course, Peter and Andrew, James and John. But... But as I've said and already, likely a brother of Matthew. And so we've got these three sets of brothers among the apostles. The name James was very common in the New Testament. And uh, so, so that uh, as we study James, the son of Zebedee, uh, there's, a, there's also James, the son of Mary and Joseph. And he'd be the half-brother of Jesus. It's an important, uh, an important name found in the Bible. Some of the women who watched Jesus' death were listed by name. Uh, one of them was Mary, the mother of James the Younger, or James the Less, and Joseph and Salome. Uh, she, she was among the women who followed Jesus from Galilee and cared for his Needs And so James, the less mother, was important among the disciples and among the believing women who uh, followed Christ. So even though we know just a little about James, the less, he was a follower of Jesus and an apostle whom the Lord called. Now, we also have a James in our church, and uh, he's suffering quite a lot right now. We, if, uh, uh, if you have opportunity, pray for James Moses. He, he's going through a very hard time right now. And so just lift him up. Ask the Lord for strength and healing. And he, He's a good, godly man. He loves the Lord and uh, has served the Lord for many years. So the name James is very important in the Bible. It's important to us even today. Now, <clears throat> it's interesting. There's a possibility here that, that's brought out in Mark and John, in Mark's account, Mark 15, <clears throat> verse 40. Let, let me look here just for a minute. <clears throat> Mark 15, verse 40. Let me read this. It says, There were also women looking on from afar, among <clears throat> whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the Less, and Joseph and Salome. Uh, who also followed him and ministered to him when he was in Galilee, and many other women who came uh, up with him uh, to Jerusalem. Now, in, in c comparing this to John 19, um, let me look at this, okay? John 19, 25. Scripture says, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her as his, uh, to his own home. So you've got, in this case, a, a Mary named the wife of Clopas. Now, the wife of Clopas is also the mother of James the Less. 
cousins on Jesus' mother's side. So this could account, the, uh, cousins on Jesus' mother's side. It could account for the Judas kiss in the Garden of Gethsemane in order to distinguish Jesus from his cousin, James the Less. So maybe they even had some uh, characteristics where they looked, uh, looked alike. Who knows? But uh, here's, here's the, we're limited in our knowledge of this man. And so we'll, we'll take what we can get and try to understand some about him and about his life. So we'll, we'll try to do that. Now, in this group of three, you have James the Less and then a man by the name of Simon the Zealot or Simon the Canaanite. Now, in Luke 6, this apostle, Simon, is known as Simon the Zealot. In Mark and Matthew, he is given the title Simon the Canaanite. In this case, Canaanite would simply mean to be zealous. And that would be eager, very eager for what you believe. And uh, maybe eager is a weak, a weak word to use. It's even stronger than that if a person is zealous. They're very, very uh, forceful and aggressive in what they believe. Zealots were a political party among the Jews at the time of Jesus, and they wanted to throw off the oppression of Rome. Now, they, they were militant, and they could be violent. So it's interesting that a person like this was among the, would be found among the 12 apostles. The zealots, as well as others in the group of apostles, we're expecting the Jewish Messiah to come. Now, their expectation was more than a spiritual kingdom, though. They were expecting the Messiah to come and set up a political kingdom and free them from their oppressors. They could be called religious patriots. They were violent men who were armed and dangerous. And if, if needed, they would turn on their own people. So there's a founder and a leader among the uh, zealots that was mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter 5. His name was Judas the Galilean, and uh, he, he was among this group. And, of course, finally there, he, he rose up with this group, and finally they were put down. But uh, he is mentioned there, and so I think maybe Simon the Canaanite or Simon the Zealot would have been uh, among them as well. Now we need to m note that in Matthew as well as in Mark's list of the 12 apostles, Simon is always listed next to Judas Iscariot. So, and uh, John MacArthur has this take on that. He says when Jesus sent the disciples out two by two, it's likely that Simon, Simon the Zealot, was paired with Judas Iscariot and that they were together in their mission. Now, I'm not saying that to disparage Simon the Zealot. I'm saying that the Lord Jesus paired people together uh, many times according to their similarities. And so, um, and then they would be sent out to serve. And so that, that's very possible that that's the case with Judas Iscariot. It's, it would be a sad thing to be paired with him, especially in hindsight when we find out later what he's known for and the terrible actions of Judas Iscariot. But it also gives us a warning today. And our warning today is, as we think about this um, Simon being paired with Judas, here is Simon who became a very good, godly uh, apostle whom the Lord used and blessed, paired with Judas who, who fell because of transgression. My friend, I don't know about you, but I've lived long enough and I've been in ministry long enough to know there are those that are very prominent in ministry who do some very bad things. And when they do, it not only affects them, but it affects those that are associated with them. And so Simon, I'm sure, was terribly embarrassed, shocked and embarrassed because of Judas Iscariot's actions. And so, but that didn't mean he needed to give up his apostleship because of Judas Iscariot. 
My friend, listen, we don't, we don't just throw away our faith because somebody we knew and loved and respected and, and listened to and paid attention to their ministry and, and benefited from their ministry and all of that. We don't just give up our faith because they fell away or because they, uh, you know, because they had a terrible ending. We follow the Lord because of God's grace and our faith and trust in Him and because of what the Lord Jesus has done for us, not because of other Christian workers. There's many people that just quit coming to church, quit going to church because because a deacon did something or a pastor did something in the church or there was some argument that that took place. Well, that's not right. It's, It's bad that those things happen. But, but we shouldn't give up our faith because of it. Sometimes even the most difficult things can happen, but we need to be found faithful and help, our church, help, help the church to grow and, and help other believers not to be discouraged. My friend, listen, at some point we have to stand up as the mature believers, and I'm sure Simon the Zealot had to do that too. He probably, had, he probably felt like he had to make some kind of excuse for Judas Iscariot. I don't know uh, how that may have been. But he, he had to stand up on his own. And not just with, if he was indeed paired with Judas Iscariot. Now, listen to me, okay? This is a very important point this morning because so many uh, people get discouraged in uh, ministry or in the Lord's work. And if you're one of those, you you need to get up. You need to get back at it for the Lord. If you're one of those that you've you've seen, you've been terribly discouraged or terribly disappointed by those that are in ministry, then then you need to you need to get things right with the Lord and go on and follow the Lord and trust Him and 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 stand for Him, even though your friend may have fallen off the turnip truck. You hear what I'm saying? Now, we want to pray for those that are discouraged, those disheartened, those that fall. We want to pray for them, pray that they might be restored, that God's grace, you know, they might come be under God's grace and that kind of thing. But even if they don't get restored, we have to go on and follow the Lord. That's the truth. As disappointing as things may be, We're told not to forsake assembling together as the manner of some is. We're told that. That's that's Holy Scripture. So we're called to be found faithful in the church. We should be there listening to the Word of God, supporting the ministry, upholding the the, the community of believers so that that church will be a light in the community. And, And our responsibility is to help to make sure that happens. And when problems come, We handle it the way the Lord would have us to handle it as best as possible. And uh, sometimes discipleship is messy. And there's those troubles, those hardships, those problems that we don't have an answer for. And uh, that could be the case that Simon was in that situation with his partner. Now... Friend, listen, and I, I think I'm going to stop there, and that just gets two of the guys I wanted to cover today. But uh, I think I want to stop there and uh, just take some time because you may be one of those that's been disheartened, or you may know someone that's been disheartened. You know, when, when I first entered the ministry, I had no idea the things I would uh, have to face in life and in ministry. I didn't know. Well, the Lord couldn't tell me then. If he had, I may have turned my back and ran away. But uh, the good news is that little by little, he allowed me to see things and to experience things and to give me grace little by little. So he gives us grace when we need it the most and as we need it in our lives. And dealing with these kind of problems that come up and problem people because discipleship can be a messy thing. And uh, it's not always as clean as, as we'd hope it would be. Mission work is the same way. And uh, but working as a pastor is the same way. 
and uh, being in ministry in general, it's the same way. There's going to be those disappointing days, disappointing seasons of life. And my friend, listen, I, I'm just, I just want to pray for you today. Maybe you've been terribly disappointed. And uh, you know what happened. And you, you, maybe you've become bitter about it. I want to encourage you just to bring that hurt and that bitterness to the Lord today. And ask Him to not only forgive you, but to restore you to the joy you had before you had to go through that difficult circumstance and that difficult and problem that uh, maybe your friends have caused you. And, uh, and then I want you to get up and go on and serve the Lord. Let the Lord work in your life powerfully and dynamically. Ask Him to guide you and lead you. Get back in that church if you've fallen away from it. And go on and serve the Lord, okay? I want to encourage you that way today. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I just pray if there's any of these that are like uh, Simon the Zealot uh, today, I just pray, Lord, that you would uh, really touch their lives, lift that burden they've been holding on to for so long. Maybe it's turned into bitterness. And they might just leave it at the feet of Jesus and uh, find uh, help and healing, hope and guidance, and the love and power of Christ. They might rise up from this place in the joy of the Lord and go on and serve the Lord like maybe they once did or maybe like they never have before. So I just commend them to you, those that are listening. I thank you for the love of Jesus Christ who has so much grace for his people. I thank you for that grace that's sufficient for any need we have. He understands that we are but men. And I thank you, O oh God, for that. And uh, so today, I just commend this time to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.